Book One, Chapter One of Hard Times by Charles Dickens. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Hard Times by Charles Dickens. Mr. Gradgrind, read by Marty Chris. Sissy Jupe, read by Jen Raimundo. Bitzer, read by M.B. Gentleman, read by Tom Crawford. Louisa Gradgrind, read by Arielle Lipshaw. Mr. Bounderby, read by Andy Minter. Mrs. Gradgrind, read by Beth Thomas. Tom Gradgrind, read by Max Schoeningham. Childers, read by David Lawrence. Kidderminster, read by Elizabeth Clatt. Mr. Sleary, read by Ron Altman. Mrs. Sparsett, read by Elizabeth Clett. Stephen Blackpool, read by Nigel Boydell. Rachel, performed by Karen Savage. Mrs. Blackpool, read by Darvinia. Mrs. Pegler, read by Sally McConnell. Mr. James Harthouse, read by Algie Pug. Slackbridge, read by John Steigerwald. Voice one, read by Sylvia. Voice two, read by Jen Raimundo. Chairman, read by Elizabeth Clatt. Jane Gradgrind, read by Goldfish. Waiter, read by Nigel Boydell. Man, read by Algie Pug. Clown, read by Darvinia. Narration read by Bob Newfeld. Book One Sewing. Chapter One The One Thing Needful. Now, what I want is facts. Teach these boys and girls nothing but facts. Facts alone are wanted in life. Plant nothing else and root out everything else. You can only form the minds of reasoning animals upon facts. Nothing else will ever be of any service to them. This is the principle on which I bring up my own children, and this is the principle on which I bring up these children. Stick to the facts, sir. The scene was a plain, bare, monotonous vault of a schoolroom, and the speaker's square forefinger emphasized his observations by underscoring every sentence with a line on the schoolmaster's sleeve. The emphasis was helped by the speaker's square wall of a forehead, which had his eyebrows for its base, while his eyes found commodious cellarage in two dark caves overshadowed by the wall. The emphasis was helped by the speaker's mouth, which was wide, thin, and hard-set. The emphasis was helped by the speaker's voice, which was inflexible, dry, and dictatorial. The emphasis was helped by the speaker's hair, which bristled on the skirts of his bald head, a plantation of furs to keep the wind from its shining surface, all covered with knobs like the crust of a plum pie, as if the head had scarcely warehouse room for the hard facts stored inside. The speaker's obstinate carriage, square coat, square legs, square shoulders, nay, his very neckcloth, trained to take him by the throat with an unaccommodating grasp, like a stubborn fact, as it was, all helped the emphasis. In this life we want nothing but facts, sir. Nothing but facts. The speaker, and the schoolmaster, and the third grown person present, all backed a little, and swept with their eyes the inclined plane of little vessels then and there arranged in order ready to have imperial gallons of facts poured into them until they were full to the brim. End of chapter 1